Let's do a comparison with the top spec M2 Max versus the M1 Max chip. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I have done a video similar to this already, and that is looking at the base M2 Max versus the top tier M1 Max. What I really want to know is what happens when we take the top shift from both of these generations and compare the result against each other to see how much of a performance improvement we're going to get with the top of the line chip. So this is going to be a very focused comparison. If you have been following this channel, thank you. If you're new, welcome, glad to have you here. I'll be sharing with you a lot of information and I highly encourage that you pause the video so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'm going to share with you. And as usual, I'll leave timestamp in the description below and additional resources as well so you can check those out. Let's have a look at our test machine and predominantly we're looking at two. Both of these are the 16 inch MacBook Pro. One of them has the top tier M2 Max. The other one has a top tier M1 Max. The difference between these two is that on the M2 Max, that is a stock configuration. Whereas on the M1 Max, that is a custom built to order one with an upgraded memory and also SSD. In addition to this, I'll also be throwing the result from the M1 Ultra in as well. This is the stock M1 Ultra, the one with the 48 GPU. This is just to give us an idea as far as how the system are performing and how it is performing against, for example, the previous generation M1 Ultra, which is still current right now because they don't have the M2 Ultra yet, but it will soon be a previous generation, right? Anyhow. I want to share with you a few things as well as that regarding the ship, there are obviously consumer leaning one and more of the pro oriented that can do more things. This is more of the pro oriented chip and it's going to have definitely much more capability. And as usual, I'll be taking a pro photographer and video approach to this. So mostly it's going to be heavy on photography with some light video work because you're watching my YouTube video and I do video a little bit too. All the testing will be done in a single app. The reason why is to compare the silicon from one generation to the next using the current set of softwares that we have and operating system. So everything from these tests that you're going to see have all been retested. If you have seen a result from previous videos and you may say that certain machines perform better, that may be the case because that version of the software and the OS combination was giving those results. However, everything has been retested to verify that the results are actually correct and everything is on the same baseline using all the same control group images. All right, SSD, let's start out with that. The storage is always expandable with external hard drive. So if you configure it a little bit less and you need more down the road, you can always expand that. But when it comes to like SSD, I think we have this overly concern for speed. And I'll say that the best thing that you can do is configure it for the need and the use case and also the future use and not necessarily for speed. So think about how much space you're currently using right now. Examine your current computer. Think about how much more you're going to put in or try to project and then configure it based on that, but not really how much, you know, your speed you're going to get if you bump up the SSD size. Because if you're taking a look at this right now, the M2 Max SSD speed is definitely faster than the M1 Max built in and you get a pretty good idea. But all of these are really fast SSDs that it's going to be hard for a majority of creatives out there to really saturate the bandwidth of these SSDs to start out with. And if you're wondering how much the SSD speed affects performance and how fast you need to get, I'll leave a link to this video up here and also in the description below so you can check it out. And the truth is you don't need that much at all because most of the creative app that we're using right now don't even go and peak anything beyond like 400 megabytes per second. A majority of the time sustain is maybe like 100 megabytes per second. And you'll see in that video. Anyway, RAM. For this, configure the RAM for what you need because this is non-upgradable and there is no way to expand this down the road. So you really need to think about how you use a computer and also your modality. Are you the type of person that will use a laptop only? If this is your only machine, then I would maybe add more RAM. If you're using a laptop desktop combo like I am, then maybe the laptop can have less RAM and the desktop would be the one that will be the more powerful machine. Those are the things to think about. Additionally, you also want to consider too, are you the type of person who will have multiple browsers and too many tabs open and multitask at with multiple programs at the same time, guilty of that. So I generally configure my desktop with a lot more memory just because I tend to use a lot of the apps that way. And if you are that way too, that will be the thing to consider. 
One more additional thing I want to mention as well is that if you're jumping from the Intel generation machine into the Apple Silicon, I would configure the memory inside your machine to be the equivalent of what you have on your Intel, if not more, but I wouldn't go for anything less because just because it has a unified memory, it doesn't mean that well, it is a magical memory or anything like that. You still need the same amount of physical memory that you have before, especially if you have already been saturating those memories. To really test this out, when you start the computer up, or I would highly encourage you to do a restart and just pretty much launch Activity Monitor, go into the Memory tab and just take a look at the memory pressure. Now you have to constantly peek this throughout the day as you're working through your workflow, if you're green, in general, the memory amount that you have is fine. If it's yellow or red, you might want to consider getting more. The better app that I like to use is iStat Menu 6. And because this app will keep track of memory pressure and everything as you go throughout your day. However, it will also keep a history of this up to 30 days. So this is really giving me a good snapshot of how I'm using my machine. And you might want to do that too before you configure another machine for your workflow. So here's the thing. When it comes to Pro, my recommendation is to go with 32 gigabytes of memory, hands down, because this is the amount that I would say is the sweet spot for any type of Pro workflow. You may need more, but 32 is going to guarantee that you're gonna have a pretty smooth workflow overall. But again, the best thing to do is to really examine your use. And what you're going to see next are a lot of specs. So this is a key or a guide on how you read those specs on the chart that I am about to share with you. Okay, let's take a look at Lightroom Classic M1 Max versus M2. And this is all tested under Ventura 13.2, Lightroom Classic version 12.1 with a full acceleration supported. So when we take a look at these numbers right now, we can see that yes, Amazingly enough, having not just only two more CPU core compared to 10, these CPU cores are running way faster, especially in Lightroom Classic 1 to 1 preview. So if you want to have super fast Lightroom Classic 1 to 1 preview, in fact, fast enough that is really almost giving the M1 Ultra a run for the money, almost, not really quite there yet, right? You can see it from that chart there. If you want this, well, the M2 may be the thing to consider. This generally what I have found is the only task that really shows this much of a bump. So let's take a look at Lightroom Classic Export. Not really quite the bump that we were looking for. So this one is using not just the CPU, but it's also using the GPU for exporting as well. But this is not really bumping as much as we have seen. And still on this one, the M1 Ultra is still reigning supreme, being able to export these 1000 Nikon D850 RAW file in under five minutes. This is still going to be the machine that you want, especially if you work through a lot of raw files day in, day out. All right, let's look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. For the most part, the timing is about the same, only about two seconds apart. I would say that this is a margin of error. I wouldn't even worry about this much. However, when it comes to Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge, this is going to start to paint a little story that may be a little different. So let's take a look at this. The difference between this and all the other tasks before is that Panorama Merge requires a lot of use of RAM and also CPU in combination. Now this chart will give you a pretty good idea that if you're doing a lot of these kind of work, you may be better off getting, for example, the previous generation M1 Max with 64 gigabytes of memory instead of, for instance, the current generation M2 Max with 32 gigabytes of memory. So you can see right there that the moment we bump up the memory, we see a reduction in time almost regardless of how fast the ship is. So that's just something to note when we're looking at these charts. So think about your workflow. If you work with a lot of large files, I would probably go with more memory on the system rather than a faster ship. All right, let's continue on with this one. And now let's have a look at Lightroom export. So this is again, Ventura 13.2, Lightroom version 6.1. This is the cloud version and the result on this, I would say it's pretty much in line what we were expecting, even though I think that the M2 Max can perform a little bit better. And yes, even though this have more memory, this one has less, for example, the M2 Max have less, the M2 Max is still beating it out. But you have to understand the way how Lightroom Classic does exporting. It utilizes a CPU, GPU, and RAM all in combination. So all those combos together account for these kind of improvement, but that really still only accounts for 15%. And if your workflow involved this, if you want to get that 15% faster, I think it's worth it. But the most impressive out of all this is the M1 Ultra that's able to export these 1000 files in under three minutes. I mean, that's just super impressive. Capture One. 
Ventura 13.2 version 16.0.2 and this is Capture 123 so this is the latest version that they have. A few things about Capture One is that, yes, I understand it is a program that is designed to do tether capture, so they don't crank up the memory. However, I really wish there was an option for us to be able to go in and really crank up the CPU usage and everything, especially for someone who may not necessarily use Capture One to do tether capture workflow, but more so to do bulk editing like I would normally do in Lightroom. Anyway, so these are the timing between all those three machines. You can see this is somewhat expected, but I think the biggest surprise out of this whole thing is that the M2 Max is performing really close within like about a minute or two of the M1 Ultra, even though M1 Ultra has doubled everything. But if you go in and examine the CPU usage during this task, it's really not tapping on that CPU that much at all. And by the way, I have set the preview to extremely large, but that's how we are testing this. So the improvement so far that we have seen is about 8% in Capture One with regards to import. In export itself, we are going to see a performance improvement of around 9%. Now, Capture One has not been able to utilize more GPU well as much as it loves to utilize GPU in the system. So this is really giving us a good idea that even though we have a lot more GPU, this is only accounting for 9% improvement. And when we have even more GPU, like 48 cores, it's not even doing that well. In fact, interestingly enough, the M2 Max is outperforming the M1 Ultra on this by close to around like 30 seconds or so. Very interesting results here. I wouldn't read too much into it. It depends on your workflow, but if you he rely heavily on Capture One, I might not even go in and get the top spec M1 Max. I might just get just the base M1 Max, and I think that's going to work just fine. Let's take a look at Photoshop. Again, I'm using Digital Lloyd tests. And the three tests I'm running from his are the speed, the medium, and the huge. And the huge will account for a 56 gigabyte file, very large. For those of you that use large files, that's great, but this is a great way to pretty much test the memory on the system and also show you that sometimes having more memory, it's actually a good thing over having a faster ship. All right, Photoshop speed. Majority of what you're seeing right now, even though the graphs are cascading a little bit, these are pretty much within milliseconds of each other that without using a computer to time this, you probably won't notice. So we're just going to skip through that. With regards to files that are 15.7 gigabytes, as long as you configure your machine with 32 gigabytes, you're going to be fine. And the memory on the Max, I would say, is a little bit faster, which is accounting for that minutia of difference in time. But again, these are milliseconds that in normal daily use in Photoshop, you're not really going to notice this. But if we take a look at Photoshop Huge, this is starting to paint a little bit of a different picture. Notice the thing here is the memory. 32, 64, and 64. These two 64 are performing just about the same within a margin of error of each other. However, when you drop the memory in half, the time start to increase by a little bit more than double actually. So these are things to think about. This is giving you an insight as to how these programs are utilizing different resources on the system. So really think about your workflow and what do you do most and configure the machine based on what you need and what you do a lot of, not just you know something that you may do every now and then, but what you primarily do on your computer system. Let's take a look at Final Cut Pro encoder decoder engine. For this one, I mean, the timing is about the same. These all have, I would say, the top encoder decoder engine, even though the Ultra has two more than the Max, we're really not seeing those as much. And this is the way how the time spreads out. They're pretty much the same in HEVC and also ProRes 422. So I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, so let's analyze this data and share with you what this is all means. So the main question you're probably asking is, should you upgrade? And that's a really great question because when it comes to the M2 Max, there are two variety of those ship. There is the base one and the top tier. Now, if you're considering going for the top tier ship, if you need the top performance, there's no other way about it, by all means, choose that. However, if you want the better option for configuration and you're going to choose the M2 Max ship anyway, I would probably choose the base one, which is the one here, and maybe add another, instead of just $200, I would add an additional $200 on top of what you would pay for the ship upgrade 
combine these two and then really just bump up your memory on the system to 64 gigabytes. Because if you work with a lot of large files, as you've seen in the example already, you're going to get more benefit out of having more memory on the system rather than having a faster ship. So those are things to think about. And I was also browsing on Apple refurbished site as well. They have the previous generation M1 Mac 16 inch. This is the one with 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD. So this is one of those stock configuration on sale right now for $26.89. Obviously the stocks in fluctuate, but this is to give us an idea between these two machines. So comparing these two for the most part, similar spec beside the fact that the ship is different. The M2 Max is the upgraded machine. But if you take a look at this, the price difference between these two is $810, or this is accounting for around 23% in saving. I would use the saving that you're getting from this machine to buy Apple Care Plus or something like that, and maybe buy external SSDs. And the other thing that you can do too is you can always look for some of these refurb machines that maybe have 64 gigabytes of memory, and the price would still be, I would say, lower then the stock configuration for the M2 Max top tier and the 16 inch one. So those are things to think about and there's really a lot to consider, but I would say that if you're really looking to upgrade, and this is the reason why I say it really all depends. If you're coming from, for instance, the M ship in general, the 13 inch machine, or for example, the MacBook Air, just like the M1, or if you're coming from, for instance, the M1 Pro, I may just go for the M1 Max and just get more memory, more SSD size so that you can utilize a lot more of it on your system. If you already have the M1 Max, I don't really see a lot of improvement that you're going to get from upgrading this, especially if you're already custom built to order your machine, you're paid a lot more already. I would just keep your current machine for the time being. So the main question that I have also answered here as well is that higher spec M1 Max or higher spec M2 Max, I would probably go with a higher spec M1 Max compared to like, I would say a mid tier M2 Max. So that's my thought about this, but hopefully this data helps you make the decision about configuring your machine. So remember that we are now in a new age where all these tests are showing you different workflows, even in photography, for example, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Capture One, Panorama Merge, Photoshop, all those are slightly different workflow using multiple different apps and they perform differently. So think about what you do most and configure your computer based on what you spend the most time doing. You may do some other things here and there with your computer and that's obviously the thing that you're gonna do with a computer anyway, but I wouldn't configure your machine based on the things that you may do every so often versus things that you really do frequently. Anyway, I hope that you find it helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit my bell, and in art we trust.